In 1971, the 24 Hours of Le Mans took place from June 12th to the 13th. With the imminent ban of engines over 3 liters for the upcoming 1972 season, the 1971 season will come to be considered as the year of the mighty engines. The 1971 season saw the introduction of the 2x2 rolling start behind a pace car. This is in contrast to the standing start from the previous year. Additionally, drivers were now allowed to stay in their cars while refueling. The draw for car manufacturers to compete was the stature of the race as the first prize for outright victory was only 13,000 US dollars, which was barely the cost of a top tier engine and not reflecting the huge preparation and work required. The start of the race saw an onslaught of mechanical problems such as the Piper Ferrari and the North American Racing Team or NART Ferrari Spider, which both had fuel system problems. The Piper car eventually joined the race again. The Martini International Porsche or Car 21, driven by Vic Elford, overheated its engine when a cooling fan blew off. However, the NART Ferrari fared worse when it ran out of fuel twice, flattened its battery and ran a low oil pressure. As the night fell and the race endured, the Martini International Porsche Car 23 had moved up to the third position when its cooling fans started to come loose. They had made it back to third after the delay when the car's driver, Reinhold Jost, found that he had no brakes approaching the Arhanaj section of the course. The Filippinetti Ferrari Car 7 had been in the fifth position early on, but then got delayed fixing its fuel pump. Rushing to catch up, Mike Parks, the Filippinetti's driver, crashed at the Maison Blanche section of the course at 1 a.m. Despite extensive damage, it was repaired, but Henry Pescarolo, the Filippinetti's second driver, had to park it at 3 a.m. because of a lack of oil pressure. When the sun rose and morning broke, the Matra race car went into the pits with a misfire at 6.20 a.m. The JW Porsche Car 19, driven by Richard Atwood and Herbert Mueller, was able to get back into second position after changing their spark plugs and fuel meter. With the delays facing other cars, the Piper Ferrari capitalized on the opportunity and steadily moved up the order. They had just got to third around 9 a.m. when their car lost another clutch. At 9.40 a.m., the Matra race car coasted to a stop at the end of the Molzan straight section of the course. Their faulty fuel meter had failed, causing them to run out of fuel. Soon after the JW Porsche Car 17, driven by Joe Seifert and Derek Bell, retired from sixth position after it had been delayed further with a crack in the engine's crankcase. This had moved the NART Ferrari Car 12, driven by Sam Posey and Tony Adamowitz, up to third, and the Ligier prototype into fifth position. Unfortunately, the Ligier's gearbox seized soon after. By the end of the race, the order stayed pretty static through the afternoon, and the race came to a subdued, incident free end. Half of the 12 classified finishers were Porsche 911s, and the overall win went to the Martini International Porsche 917K, driven by Hege van Lennep and Helmut Marco, which completed 397 laps, powered by a 4.9-liter flat-12 engine. The 1971 season marked the end of an era, with the regulations changing in 1972, limiting engine size in both Group 5 and 6 to 3 liters and it was also the last run on a circuit layout that had been virtually unchanged for 39 years, with a new part of the track opened in the next year that bypassed the dangerous and fast Maison Blanche stretch. In this video, we will take a closer look at the history and mechanics that eventually drove the inspiration of Porsche's use of the flat engine in their cars. The majority of sports cars throughout Porsche's history are powered by flat boxer engines, beginning with its first car, the Porsche 356. The 356 used an air-cooled boxer 4 engine 
during its 1948 to 1965 production run. The 356 design overlapped the original Volkswagen Beetle in regards to an air-cooled, four-cylinder, rear-mounted, rear-wheel drive layout with unitized pan and body construction. Additionally, certain mechanical components including the engine case and some suspension components were based on and initially sourced from Volkswagen. The use of flat boxer engines in Porsche's cars was essentially derived from the design ethos carried over from the original Volkswagen Beetle. But unlike the 356 boxer engine, the winning Porsche 917K from the opening of this video utilized a flat 180 degree V engine. It should be noted that our primary consideration for the remainder of this video will be on the differences of a boxer engine and a flat 180 degree V engine from the perspective of their crankshafts and timing and not the number of their cylinders. Let's first dive into the history of the flat engine and then compare the differences of a boxer engine and a flat 180 degree V engine. The first flat engines were known as Contra engines and were designed by Carl Benz who was granted a patent in 1896. This four-cylinder Contra design was the first boxer-type engine in automotive history and was produced in 1897. Early uses of this design were used in vehicles such as the 1900 Lanchester 8-horsepower Phaeton Boxer Twin, the 1901 Wilson Pilcher Boxer 4, and even an early Ford model variants. Carl Benz, the flat engine's designer, realized that horizontally opposed pistons in a boxer engine would balance each other out with respect to momentum when the corresponding pistons reach top dead center simultaneously. The advantages of flat engines, which encompasses both boxer engines and flat 180 degree V engines, are a short length, low center of mass, and being well suited to air cooling. The differences begin to surface if we were to compare the boxer engine and a flat 180 degree V engine side by side. In a boxer configuration, we can see that when the cylinders are set at 180 degrees of one another, the balance of dynamic masses is much improved. This is because the timing of the pistons found in an opposed configuration means that any momentum produced by the power intake strokes and the exhaust compression strokes are effectively counterbalanced by the corresponding piston movement of the opposite side. The piston movement is possible by virtue of a double offset crankshaft, in which two cylinders were slightly offset within the open topped engine frame. With our attention shifted over to the flat 180 degree V engine, it becomes apparent that the cylinders are set at 180 degrees of one another. But the biggest difference is that each pair of pistons on opposing banks share a crank pin or crank journal on its respective crankshaft. This is a stark unlikeness to the boxer engine where each pair of pistons on opposing banks ride on their own crank pin or crank journal because of the double offset crankshaft. Consequently, despite having the packaging advantages of a boxer engine, a flat 180 degree V engine lacks the inherent balance of a boxer engine. Though it's actually cheaper to produce crank pins that only accommodate one cylinder, which may offset the cost of having more individual crank pins. While conducting research for this video, I was surprised to find only three examples of a flat 180 degree V engine being utilized by a car manufacturer. Though it's possible there could be more examples, the first was in the Porsche 917 mentioned in the opening of this video, which used a flat 180 degree V12 engine. The other was the Ferrari 512 Berlinetta Boxer that was powered by a flat 12-cylinder engine. Despite the name, the Ferrari 512 Berlinetta Boxer actually employed a flat 180-degree V12 engine. The last was the intriguing Steyr 50, a small Austrian car that interestingly used what's described as a 178-degree V4 engine. However, the name of the Steyr 50's engine is misleading because the engine was really a flat 180 degree V engine. If you know of any other car manufacturers that used a flat 180 degree V engine, let me know down in the comment section and give this video a thumbs up.